Could Flex Lewis make a Masters Olympia comeback? Nick Walker's crazy transformation? Urs Kalachinski three weeks out? Plus much more. What's up, desktopers? Xavier Wills here for Desktop Bodybuilding, and we are back with another bodybuilding news video just three weeks out of the 2023 Mr. Olympia, and we have a ton of Olympia news, and we're kicking it off with Kamal El Gagni skipping the 2023 Mr. Olympia, and I believe it was the first year he was actually qualified for not only the 212 Mr. Olympia, but also the Open. So there was speculation whether he was going to do the 212 or the Open. And he did mention that he might actually sit out this year. And he has decided to sit out this year. And he did mention as well that his brother had actually been diagnosed with cancer. So I just wanted to send my thoughts and prayers to Kamal Gagne and his family uh, during this tough time as well. And hopefully we get to see Kamal at, what is he now, 51 or so years of age, come back next year or the year after. I have heard the Masters Olympia is going to be every second year. So I think he wants to give it one more go at that Masters Olympia in 2025, I believe it will be by then. And I think it'll be 53 years of age. So whether Kamal will go 212 Masters Olympia, because how cool would that be to win a 212 title in the Masters Olympia and also the Open, or if he'll go Open in a couple of years' time. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Would you like to see Kamal come back in 2025 and go for 212 or go for the Open once again? Now, one guy that could make that comeback at the Masters Olympia in two years' time, if they do decide to do that contest every second year, is your 212, seven-time 212 Mr. Olympia in Flex Lewis, who actually posted up this. Someone took this video and he shared it to his story. And he's a little over 200 pounds right now, so probably sitting about 200 pounds or just maybe slightly under 200 pounds in the morning. And I love to see it as well. I love to see guys like Flex Lewis, Jay Cutler, Lee Priest, you even go back as far as the old school guys like Robbie Robinson, who I believe is in his 70s, maybe even close to 80 at this point, and he looks fantastic. So it's a really good look for the sport in that way. But honestly, Flex Lewis, if they do decide to do this Masters Olympia every second year, in 2025, he'll be 40 years of age. Even in 2024, he would be as well, I believe. And who wouldn't want to see Flex Lewis come back, compete in the Masters Olympia, maybe by then with up the prize money, made it an even bigger thing as well. And I think that'd be really, really cool to see because Flex Lewis always wanted to be the champ champ. So winning the 212 Olympia and also winning the Open Olympia. Now, obviously this would not be the Open Mr. Olympia, but he could go for the Open Masters Olympia title or even the 212 Olympia title. We saw Hidetari Yamagishi win the 212 Masters Olympia title this year. And honestly, I think Flex without doing a huge amount could win that title very, very easily because Hidetari Yamagishi, while he's a master of posing, he came in great shape, really good condition. He is missing a little bit on his physique. So I think Flex wouldn't have to do too much at all and he wouldn't have to push his body to the levels he had to because one of the reasons he did retire is because he's trying to push the food to move into open and he wasn't able to do it. He was having a lot of the issues that Brett Wilkin was having and a whole bunch of other guys have had in terms of digestion, vomiting, and things like that. So Flex Laws could do it in a healthier way, come back at the Masters Olympia, become a champ champ, and really end that legacy. And then he would be an eight-time Olympia champion across the 212 and also the Masters Olympia. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Would you like to see Flex Lewis come back and compete in the Masters Olympia in 2025? Now let's move on to some Olympia physique updates. And we've got one here from Nathan Diasha, getting better and better. And Nathan is a guy that doesn't prep for a huge amount of time. He prepped for a little bit longer, I believe, this year, uh, being coached by Stefan, which is Urs Kalachinski's coach. And he's just getting better by the update. And I'm super, super impressed. That level of back density and that back double bicep, the waist is so small, the muscles are so round, looking really, really good. And then he posted up this one as well. And you can just see how round his physique is in this physique update. The chest, the shoulders, the arms, the legs, the midsection, you know, while he's not even flexing it here, is still pretty tight. And this is probably what many guys would look completely bloated and blown out if they've got their stomach relaxed like that. So Nathan is super impressive and I cannot wait to see him back on that Olympia stage in just three weeks time. Now, a guy that Nathan might be battling with and 
I might have these guys right next to each other in my Olympia predictions is Mikkel Krizanek or Mikkel Krizo. This is a physique update three weeks out about 2023, Mr. Olympia. And Mikkel Krizo is a hard one to put your finger on in terms of where he's going to place. Could he bring a package that pushes into that top five of the Olympia this year? I think this year he's looking considerably better than he did last year. The back has come up a lot, which was his problem area. He's never going to have the widest back, but he does have a good level of thickness in that back now too. So I think Mikel Cruzo can definitely move up at this year's Mr. Olympia versus 2022. And a guy that is looking to move up at this year's Olympia and placed third last year is Nick the Mutant Walker. Really, really impressive here. You can see the conditioning coming through very nicely. And I looked at this photo and I'm like, he looks more dense than past years. It looks like that back's thicker. And then I saw this posted up by who is the best BB on IG. And the left is three weeks out of the 2023 Arnold Classic. The right is three weeks out of the Mr. Olympia, which is the current physique update. Now, the scaling is slightly off. The Mr. Olympia 2023 version is a little bit bigger. But you can see how much more that back is actually popping out, how much more 3D it looks. And the conditioning is pretty much the same, or if anything slightly better as you can see in that lower back. So let me know what you guys think. Do you think Nick Walker is not only going to be bigger at this year's Mr. Olympia and we've heard, you know, he's potentially going to be up to 17 pounds bigger, maybe even more. That's what he actually predicted in terms of weight compared to the Arnold Classic earlier this year, which is a huge, huge amount. And that sort of leads me to think that he was flat at the Arnold Classic. Do you think he'll bring the same level of conditioning or do you think he'll be close or do you think the conditioning will miss? Because I don't know. By these physique updates, it looks like he's going to be in the same condition. And if he's even 10 pounds heavier than the Arnold Classic, he's going to be very, very dangerous because people thought it was close between him and Samson Dowder at the 2023 Arnold Classic. So if that was close and he's 15, 10 pounds up or whatever in the same conditioning, Samson's going to have to continue to improve like he has been improving to stay ahead of Nick Walker. Now we move on to the 212 and to a guy that many people consider to be Sean Clarita's number one threat at this year's 212 Olympia in Keon Pearson. This was posted up by his coach, Patrick Tua, says brought those wheels up from every angle, going to be hard to match for anybody. We could consider taking the skin off completely, but then again, let's leave that for next year. So he says, hashtag 212 Olympia, hashtag best legs in the biz, hashtag prodigy. So big claims there by Patrick Tour, and obviously you can see here with Keon, the conditioning is on. It, they, I mean, the legs are looking great at this point. That was the one area of his physique in terms of muscularity that I was like, they could come up a little bit to match that freaky upper body. And because his waist is so small and he flares out so much, it gives the upper body of an even bigger illusion, I guess. So his like lats look incredibly insane. His arms look absolutely monstrous, and which they are obviously, but... The illusion that Keon Pearson gives is absolutely incredible. So if that condition is nailed in, if he has enough fullness to his physique as well that pushes the muscle out against the skin, he could potentially win this 212 Olympia title because we know he's going to be prettier. We know he's probably the best poser in the 212. He's going to be bringing a lot of heat coming to this 2023 212 Olympia, and I have no doubt that Keon Pearson could get it done. But will he? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below on that. Now we head to the classic physique and a physique update from Urs Kalachinski, the miracle bear with Marcus Ruhl, who was obviously a top IFB pro bodybuilder back in the day, a real mass monster. Flies in the face of what classic physique really is now, but look at that from Urs. Like those glutes are so crazy dialed in. If he stood on stage now, you'd say his conditioning's on point and he's three weeks out right here. I'm not sure if Urs has more to come down in terms of fitting the actual weight cap. But if he doesn't, and this is like sort of around his weight cap, then that's great news because we know he has more room to move this year, which works in his advantage for sure. And he still had more room to move in that classic class. Now, he got really heavy in his offseason, so I don't know if he's struggling to get down or not, and that's why he's in such insane shape at three weeks out. And you can see Marcus Rule pointing out the glutes there, and he's like mind-blown, and he is so impressed by Urus. And look at that quad completely striated. I'd say the only area for Urs that he needs to harden up a little bit is the lower back. But this is my favorite shot of his. That front double bicep, the way he hits it from the calves to the quads, the midsection, everything looks crazy. And the ab shot, he just needs to make sure he breathes that all the way out because there's just that little bit more he can come down on those abs. But the conditioning's insane. The roundness has improved with the more muscularity to his physique. 
he's getting more aesthetic the bigger he gets. And Marcus, you can just see the appreciation of the glutes is there, no doubt. <laughs> and, and I think everybody would be fan is appreciating it. And uh, obviously, it's not a glute contest, but that level of conditioning, I mean, it pops. Like if you see him on stage, it's definitely going to pop. And I think it's in Ura's advantage that the posing trunks are a little smaller in classic physique nowadays because you can obviously reveal that and show a little bit of those glutes uh, to basically... I suppose increase his advantage a little bit because I don't think anyone has as hard glutes as Urs Kalachinsky in that classic physique class. But anyway, guys, that's it for this one. If you did appreciate this video, give the video a thumbs up, smash that like button, also subscribe and hit the notification bell button. That way you'll be notified of every video that goes up from myself, Xavier Wills at Desktop Bodybuilding, including all my Olympia coverage 2023 and we're only three weeks out. I'm going to have lives going up, all that good stuff while the Olympia is on. So make sure you stay tuned and subscribe. But anyway, guys, that's it for me. My name is Xavier Wills. This is Desktop Bodybuilding and we are out.